Shalom, everyone. So tonight we had our Haftarah study, and um, well, we fig I figured out that um, that my Firefox browser and my Internet Explorer browser are kind of nuts. Um, one, you know, sometimes I'll use my Internet Explorer browser, and I can't hear anyone in the room. They sound like this. Uh, 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 that's what they sound like. They just get all chopped up. And then sometimes when I use my alternate browser, it's the same way. So tonight Firefox worked, and hopefully Firefox will work now for the rest of the time. So we had it in my room for that reason, because I needed to do some tests to figure out uh, why I couldn't hear uh, Brenda on the, uh, on the uh, Torah study on Tuesday, which was really fun. So, anyway, we talked about uh, Micha, and it was chapter 5 through chapter, um, what was it, chapter what? Oh, I can't... It was really short. I know that. It's very, very short. What was it? Chapter 4. Yeah, I think it was, was 4. No, sorry. It was 5. So we started at Chapter 5. Hold on. Let me get my bearings, people. Can you believe this? I start a video. I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, so it was 5 to... 6 verse, that doesn't make sense, yeah, okay, so it was, uh, it was chapter 5 to 6 verse 8, I believe, 6 verse 8, Yes, it was. Now that we got that figured out. So anyway, folks, it was good. It was really short. Really, really, really short. Um, and basically, how it was related to the Torah portion was pretty obvious. Um, talks about ruling Israel. Who will rule Israel? Um, from one of you shall come forth. And that's, of course, King David. Um, then talking about... Um, uh, it says the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many peoples like dew from the Lord like droplets on grass which do not look to any man nor place their hope in mortals okay I'm talking about us he's talking about us and what's good about that what's really special about that is that it repeats it back to back okay so it, that's the first time and if you look at Verse 7, it says, The remnant of Jacob shall be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among beasts of the wild. <clears throat> to me, that sort of, it sort of sounds like the diaspora, in a way. Um, then, um, uh, you know, it talks about um, God destroying uh, nations that do not obey. Um, and also, here's a really interesting part of this. Now, uh, God actually says, listen, this was my covenant with you. I took you out of the land of Egypt. You know, we made a deal. Um, you accepted the deal. You accepted to be my people. And then God asks, my people, what wrong have I done you? What hardship have I caused you? Testify against me. And I think that's that's really special because, you know, in in the beginning, in like Bereshit, we we see that, you know, it says God made God made man in man's image. So so God has the capacity to understand and think like a human being does. And in, in the Torah portion that we read this week, which connects to this Haftarah, 
we see that um, that God says to uh, to one of the characters, I can't remember if it was Balak or Balem, but he states, I am not like man. I am not capricious like man. And so it's it's kind of like a, a, a um, an offset here. It's kind of like a counterpoint. In, in the Torah portion, you know, God was making an effort to say, I'm not as fickle as you you humans are. And in this, God is saying, I'll listen to you. What's your what why do you worship idols? What's your deal? Why can't you just behave and follow the simple rules that I've given you? And it even goes, you know, it even goes on to describe these are the you know, this is all I need you to do to uphold the covenant. This is all I need you to do. And it's very, very simple. Um there's a, another passage in here that has to do with animal sacrifices and I know that there's there's some Christians um, on here that have kind of a twisted idea about the animal sacrifice business um, and the rebuilding of the temple um, yeah uh, a lot of Christians think that um, that Judaism you know Jews aren't perfected because it states somewhere that um, this, you know that uh, animal sacrifices um, will have to be had again at some point, and they're not. And you know we don't we don't do animal sacrifices. Well, I've got news for you, uh, some of you Christians out there that think that. If you go to um, Micha um, chapter six, verse. Um, Six, it says, and I will just read it. With what shall I approach the Lord? Do homage to God on high. Shall I approach Him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Would the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with myriads of steam of streams of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for my sins? And God says, No, 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 no. I've, t I've told you, only do justice, love goodness, and walk modestly with your God. Then your name will achieve wisdom. So no animal sacrifices, people. Um, so if anyone has any problems with Christians regarding that, it's right here in the, t in the, in the Torah um, that, you know, animal sacrifices aren't, aren't, aren't necessary. So yeah, so we had a really good time, and um, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, I know at my show we're we're having a really early, um, really early uh, Shabbat service, which is, which might be difficult for me to get to. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, usually the service is at eight fifteen. Um, and this one's going to be at like 5.30, which is like, I think, way too early. Um, so I might, I might stay home for this Shabbat. I don't know. Um, but I hope everyone else has a good Shabbat. And uh, I will talk to you all soon. Okay. Shalom.